And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Rakdos Ar Aristocrats to kick off our Rotation Proof Monday stream today. It's right on Mondays here on the channel until Rotation, which is happening at the end of September at some time on Arena. Um, so, you know, we have about maybe about four weeks left or so. Uh, we are playing decks completely comprised of cards that are not rotating out. So um, when rotation happens, it's going to be whenever Throne of Eldraine releases on Arena. At that point, Standard will only consist of the past four sets and Throne of Eldraine. So Guilds of Ravnica forward. Those five sets will be uh, legal in Standard. And um, no longer will we be able to play the cards from Ixalan, Rivals of Ixalan, Dominaria, or Core Set 2019. So what we're doing here on Mondays is building decks just based around the cards that are left. And the reason why we're doing this is because a lot of people uh, want to, you know, get into standard and, and, you know, play standard decks and everything, but they don't want to invest in cards that are rotating out um, with their wild cards and everything and want to build other decks. So that's why we're, we're spending one day a week on these rotation-proof decks. You can see the ones we got over here on the left for today. There's also a playlist on the YouTube channel with all the ones that we have done previously as well, if you want to check out a lot more of them. Um, but anyway... Uh, let's go and get to our deck here. This is pretty close to regular Rakdos Aristocrats right now. We don't really have to make um, too many changes here to make it rotation proof. The biggest thing that, that hurts us, like a lot of the decks, is we don't get the dual lands, um, the buddy lands, whenever we're playing these rotation proof decks. So there's no Dragon Skull Summit. That's, that's honestly our, our biggest thing that hurts us. And instead we got some Bloodfeld Caves. They enter tapped, they get, they gain us a life, which is fine, but they enter tapped. And I don't really want tap lands, though, with a whole bunch of one drops and two drops and three drops. You know, we're looking to curve out. So I'm just playing three instead of playing, like, the full four. But I think it's still important to, you know, have black mana for our black spells and then try to have double red for Chandra. I'm still playing three instead of just playing basics and blood crypts. Um, so we'll see how that works out. And then I'm playing Grim Initiates, which honestly, this card is great in this deck, I think. Like, I'm, I'm actually really excited to play Grim Initiate here. Uh, usually I'd have, like, Fanatical Firebrand in this deck. But honestly, I think this this card is pretty underrated. It, you know, so it gives us a 1-1 first strike, which is, you know, not, not a great creature. But we can pump it up with the help of, like, Judith that can make it a, a 2-1 uh, first strike, which, you know, it's, gets a little bit more difficult to block. But whenever it dies, we do get to amass one, so we get an another 1-1 one, one token. So whenever we kill it off with, like, Priest of Forgotten Gods, or we sacrifice it, I should say, with Priest of Forgotten Gods or Mask of Immolation or anything like that, um, you know, we get an extra body, and that extra body can be pretty important. And then uh, Cyborg-wise is where we get all of our removal spells. Yeah, Sultite Arcbow with your rock. Absolutely. Perfect. All right, I can build that deck for you there. Thanks, Samantha. All right. So let's go ahead and give this a try, see how it does. With these rotation-proof decks, we just play them through a traditional constructed league. And you can tell I haven't played the last two days. Let's get back to it. And see if we can get to five wins before two losses. All right, so here we go. <laughs> and anyway, hey Zerg, All Star, Achille, um, welcome back, y'all. Soul Farmer, thank you so much there. Samantha All Star for that donation. Hi, I'm going to write that one down. Is there a specific day or time slot that, that you'd like me to have that ready for there? Hey, Cali Commuter, thanks for the resub there. Go ahead and give this a try. We have the Remodi Reveler that helps us um, helps us find lands. We can discard gutter bones even. Forest. 
So Forest is probably telling us that they're going to be playing creatures, so I probably want these shocks. <clears throat> yeah, let's go ahead and just discard the gutter bones. So if we do find black mana, we can pick gutter bones back up. Alright, pinging our opponent to death. A bunch Don't of little worry. creatures here. I brought company. Attack. Hey, Alder 2. Yeah, I, I did, didn't think there was any chance for 3 mana to fairy to get banned today. And I, I don't think there's any chance for it to get banned before, like, December at the earliest. Like, the only way that it could get banned in December would be <clears throat> if the metagame, like, the new metagame after rotation completely warps around it. I think it's it's a very unlikely chance that that happens, but Say hi to my fiery friends. that's the only way. Like, if you're hoping for a Teferi ban. Um... They're going four color elementals. And they're going they're going hard with four color elementals with basic lands. Go get them, buddies. They can't make a block that keeps them alive. Because of the shock in hand. Should have grabbed some water. So, I mean, we have removal spells, of course, in our sideboard here. Grasp, Coil, Bedevil. Um, I don't think I really want Legion's End. That doesn't kill their important creatures. So, Omnath, Risen Reef, and Cavalier Thorns. These are all cards that I'm a little bit more worried about than others. Hmm. But I don't want to overdo it. I want to keep a, a good amount of creatures in for Priests of Forgotten Gods, so I don't want to just slam six removal spells in the deck. But I guess I guess we could just replace Shock with better removal. We can do that. Hope you don't mind. I'm going to cut another Gutter Bones, and let's play these four. Let's play one one Bedevil, one Coil. Okay. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, no problem. So, Rotation Proof, Sultai Bow. Sultai Arc Bow. I don't think this is a very profitable attack for us, us trading, us getting one damage in and then them getting two damage back at us. So I am not going to do the whole attacking thing. Priest is an amazing draw. Got to get that in play first before playing the Chandra. Hey, Hugo. 
Welcome to the channel. Okay, let's make some creatures. Get rid of our creatures. Say thanks for the memories. That is pretty surprising. Sacri they sacrificed the overgrowth elemental. I wasn't really expecting that. <clears throat> Lantern. Gotta fix that mana. I thought this was a sparring match. Yeah, this is such a juicy combo. Such a good combo. These two together. Ah, it's very convenient to make exactly two creatures when that is the number of creatures that we need to sacrifice. That is very convenient. Response to this trigger. I mean, I guess I have the priest that just kills it anyway. But I wanted to respond to this trigger so they don't get anything back. Nicol Bolas? Now that is spicy. Sorry, I need to go get some water after this this game. That is spicy. Nickel bolus in there. Yeah, I guess I could have bedeviled the lantern. All right, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to hit play. I'm going to be right back and get some water. <clears throat> be right back. All right, we're back. A bunch of one drops. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen Nickel Bolts, Dragon God, and Risen Reef played together. I should have Blood Crypted here. Yeah, I should have blood crypted in gutter bones. <clears throat> All right, one zero. Sorry, did that a little fast. Okay, doesn't really. I guess it. Do yeah, it does matter. Hmm. Because they probably want to block Dreadhorde Butcher. Which means we would have dealt two damage. Yeah, Knight of the Ebon Legion is, of course, a, a good card. They could certainly be in the deck. Knight's not really a card that you want to sacrifice. So Knight doesn't work that well with Priest of Forgotten Gods because you do not want to sacrifice Knight. But besides that, Knight is powerful. Very good on its own. Alright, so we're sacking the Footlight Fiend, playing Footlight Fiend to sacrifice so that I can do one damage to the Risen Reef. <clears throat> Kill that, and now they have to sacrifice the Grazer. And now our Butcher is going to get in there.
Yeah, Rampaging Ferocidon is getting unbanned for a few weeks. Uh, that'll be a fun card to play. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Does make the red decks better for sure. Which is not really a bad thing necessarily. <clears throat> but it's a it's a really good good tool uh when trying to uh think of a card that's really good against vampires and scapeshift. Uh, Ferocidon is exactly that, so it'll be a a good card to have in this meta game where those are the two most popular decks here for the last month. It was banned originally because of Red mono red's dominance. All right, so we are killing our opponent there. Oh yeah, I I haven't done that, Luto. I'll I'll be doing that off stream. The the Zendikar landfall thing. I'll be doing that off off stream. Hmm. Okay, so we're playing against Sultai. Zombies. It's probably when all these legions ends. Guess we're gonna want Noxious Grasp to kill your rock and Cavalier and probably Bedevil as well. Let's take out Shock. Let's take out the Mask of Immolation. Just a little slow. Gives me 63. I'm not sure. Like, Priest honestly worked out pretty well for us there. But I'm really not sure if this is a Priest matchup or or at least all four. I think I'm going to trim a couple Priests. I kind of want to play this, Chandra. Kind of. All right, and then I'm trimming a one-drop. Um, I guess gutter bones. Yeah, this makes two bodies. Full Life Fiend can kill Risen Reef. We'll get rid of gutter bones. Hey, King J. Yeah, that it is four wild cards for, for just like, yeah. I, I think it will be about three weeks, on arena because it doesn't. It's not actually available. It's not going to be legal on arena until the fourth of September. Um, so like in eight days, and so yeah, by that time there should only be like three weeks of the format left. So that is not very much time for using a wild card, that's for sure. No growth spiral here. Cast down. It will... <clears throat> Ferocidon's not legal right now in, in standard, but it will be legal... And available to play on the fourth. You can you can still get them on arena right now. Like I have Frostons on my account um, from just like opening packs and stuff. Opened them. I guess I lead with the de the devil. Between playing Devil or Chandra first. If we play Chandra, we get to attack for two this turn, but then they also get to attack Chandra for one. It's unfortunate. Wish I had the Noxious Grasp to respond right there.
Mana's pretty tough for Mardu here with this rotation proof deck. And I, I think you got everything you need here. And Rakdos colors. No, my Chandra. <laughs> no, you shouldn't shouldn't feel bad about that at all, King J. That really hurt. Getting my Chandra out of here. I was gonna, I was gonna say like that didn't make tokens right away. I was like, what's going on? Ugh, I really need that Chandra. This would have been pretty incredible with that Chandra. Each, because, so, the two tokens, elemental tokens that you make, you do sacrifice them at your, the, at your end step. And so, we would have sacrificed two tokens, we would have got four Mayhem Devil Triggers each turn. So, whether that's killing two zombies or doing four damage to them. The statement unbanning Ferocidon will have zero impact is not a correct statement. Rampaging Ferocidon is a good card that we'll see a lot of play in the three weeks it is legal on Arena. I think we should wait a little bit longer because even if I legions end these tokens, it's not really doing very much for me. They have like the mobilized district that can block a mayhem devil. Let's give him another turn. Let him pop this memorial. Just want to kill two one ones, I guess. And yeah, so it's it's either person sacrificing any permanent. And so that was a sacrificed permanent there, the Memorial to Genius. Well, it's still going to... Yeah, but that doesn't mean it won't have zero impact. I mean, it's still... It's still going to have an impact on the format before rotation. I think this game's over. To like double block your rock. Yeah, Frostone isn't just for mono red. It'll go, it'll be in. Yeah, of course the Dino, like Jun Dinos, those kind of decks. But just just red mid range decks, like Rekindling Phoenix, 
decks, uh, like green, red, like gruel decks. Like gruel, love to have that card. Um, you know, like your Domri, your Domri decks. It can work really well in a variety of decks. Yeah, the sagas were a cool design. I like the sagas. Hmm. I I kind of forgot about. I don't know. I I can see it there. We may have been able to win still, I guess. If we would have top decked God Eternal Bantu with two Mayhem Devils, would we have killed our opponent? I'm not sure. Maybe. Maybe I shouldn't have conceded there. I don't remember how many lands we had in play. They were at, I think, 14. And they could have like, gained three life with attacking with Yurok. I don't remember. Um, but I guess I might have had an out there. Maybe. Unclear. I would rather have Chandra in play in case of Thought Erasure than Mayhem Devil. So that was last game. Whenever I played Mayhem Devil before Chandra, that was um, a cons that was something that I wasn't really considering. Is Thought Erasure on their side? Maybe I'm not cut out to be a monk. The, yeah, transforming cards, the cards that transform, that's that's a mechanic that we may see again in, in other cards. Because, um, yeah, that was just like randomly in M19 with Nicol Bolas, the Ravager, and then Ixalan had the transform lands. Like the enchantments that transform into lands. Like, like Sagas, I, I'm not expecting Sagas just to be on another block randomly, but... The transform stuff could certainly be in another block. Not good draws for us this game. Not good draws for us at all. So I'm expecting them to get your rock back here, which I'm fine with because I can bedevil it. Like no matter what I what I do, I'm gonna have to do that. The problem is they get the double. Yes. Okay. Good. They didn't play a land first. Good. Yeah, they definitely should. Well, I guess they cast that, I respond anyway, so I guess they just didn't have a land in hand. Man. Our deck looks... These last two games, games two and three, our deck has looked pretty unimpressive with our draw steps. We've just been all lands and one drops. Where our opponent... Still has a lot of gas, and Field of the Dead gives them basically infinite gas. Every draw step is either good or it's a land, which still makes a 2-2. Bantu doesn't save us. 
here. This is over. Ooh, I got three mastery tree orbs. Let's go master some trees. Yeah, give me God's willing. Hanged Executioner. Cool, that card's in our Azorius Skies deck for later, so that's awesome. And then, looks like we get Planar Cleansing. Now that we get that, now next time, now we can unlock, we can either do Kethys or Kaikar. Those are our last two. Vox, Mor Vox Mortis. Thank you so much for the sub there. Resub in here a second month. You are awesome. Thanks, Fox. Hey, Storkster. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks for being here on the live stream. All right, so Vox sub number two on the day. All right, keep our hand. A G G sus. <laughs> well, Drowned Catacomb wouldn't really let us play turn one Gutter Bones either. Alright, opponent. Does not seem like our opponent is a okay. Hey, Arx Jelly. I did enjoy the time off. Thank you so much. Had a fun weekend of R&R, &R. and yeah, back to work here with Rotation Proof Monday today. All right, blue and black. Got to find that Azcanta. Could be anywhere. Need a fire started? Hey, these little guys are great. Where is Ascanta? Is it right there? Yeah, I do have Lana Werolf in the Simic Hydra deck. Lana Werolf is the one singular card that I make an exception for with the rotation proof decks because I, I do recommend just crafting it with it being a common still because um, it's just it's it's just such an important card it just uh, raises the power level of the decks that it's in by enough that it's the on only card that I make an exception for Deckmaster looks to be working on my side, so you may need to refresh your stream if Deckmaster is not working for you. I didn't. I haven't done the landfall event at all. Looks like my opponent's having connection Don't issues. Worry. I brought company. All right, so all these cards are pretty bad. I'm just gonna discard them all. Let's get new ones. Hmm. Those cards weren't great either.
Yeah, I'll probably have to do that tomorrow. The landfall event. Anybody have a, a deck that they really liked for the landfall event? I know that like whenever you play a land, like different things happen depending on what the top card of your library is, but I don't really even know what that is. I haven't really looked at the event at all yet. Okay, use Sultai Value Town. Nice. Mono Red is busted like always. Gates plus field works very well. Hey, these little guys are great. All right, so this will be lethal here. I mean, I, I don't think my opponent is actually playing. Let's just sacrifice this Dreadhorde Butcher. Do five damage. Look at Bantu. Being all Bantu and everything. Alright, so against Control, we would want Duress and Chandra. And we do not want Mask of Immolation or Shock or really Priest of Forgotten Gods either. I guess I could play a couple Bedevils to destroy some Planeswalkers and we'll take out Priest. Eight. Yeah, so Storkster, so yeah, I recommend checking out, I recommend it for watching the, the replays, uh, watch them on the YouTube channel instead of here on Twitch. Um, yeah, so watch. So there's the YouTube channel there. You can see, you know, it's broken down by deck and everything too, for you there. Um, and then yeah, you don't have to worry about the the muting and everything on there. Um, I don't know what my rank is right now. I think I'm in diamond some. Like, I know I'm in diamond somewhere, but I don't know where. But no, I'm not really going for top twelve hundred this month. What is it? The twenty sixth. Yeah, probably won't get there this month. Just need to get the top 1,200 in one of the next couple of months before the next Mythic Championship qualifier. Uh, it's not the same content on Emusha. Um, on YouTube, I don't, I don't have any music whatsoever on YouTube. I have different audio tracks recording right now. So there's an audio track that's being played for y'all that has music and then I have a different audio track that's just uh, me talking and the computer sounds with no music and that goes to YouTube that's what I re that's what I use for like the recording and that goes to YouTube well it counts our opponent didn't play magic that game, but it counts as a win towards that other thing. Alright, I gotta send a message real quick. Looks like a very reasonable hand to keep. I don't think that turn one Footlight Fiend is as important as turn two these cards. So let's lead with the Bloodfell Cave. So this, if this was Dragon Skull Summit, we would be able to go Fiend into here. But all right, Hallowed Fountain probably means Dreadhorde Butcher is more important than a Priest. No, Guild. I haven't heard that. I don't know who that is, though. Espa.
Let's go and just play our, our cards. I am not going to sit this one out. What you bouncing? I've got time. Makes sense. Honestly, I just don't think I really want to sacrifice with priest here. This is hardly my worst defeat. We're gonna be doing kind of the same sideboard we were just a little bit ago. We're gonna be taking out priest of forgotten gods against control. This isn't a fight you can win. Bye. <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, I've done the All right, hero boots leaving. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's time to go. I mean, you gotta go. Yeah. All right. Still got a four-hour drive before I have to go to work. Darn. All right. All, right. All right. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, thanks for having me. Yep. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. Do I want to bond to? Probably don't. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So I probably want to bond to no, we're gonna we're gonna say bond to. I think I'd want to like sacrifice down to like three lands. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> I don't think he will. That was a boot to the head and mod mod here in, in chat and everything. Another a fellow streamer. But David, he was here he came over this weekend. Which is why I took the last two days off. We were just hanging out. So The shock's probably not gonna be doing too much for me. Maybe I should play the Bantu. So if I play Bantu, I'm sacrificing Priest and two lands. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Show restraint. Shock. You just let me know if you're up for round two. Not so fast. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, time to attack. So wondering if I should play like I'm I'm playing initiate. Kind of wondering if I should just remodi and just discard my hand and draw three. I, so basically, I have to discard the shock and draw three. That's probably worth it over just drawing one card. You know, I know that the shock helps finish them off. We're pretty close, though. That was a great turn. Hmm. 
Okay, so we have Chandra, Chandra Shock Hero as an option. Too many swamps. So I'm, let's go all out here. Don't worry. I brought company. Alright, so this attack, hopefully setting up uh, Bantu, sacrifice the, the big Dreadhorde Butchers to kill them later. More heroes. That card's annoying. That card's really annoying. That was a very good turn. It's not even over yet. I could still play another card. This was looking good for me a little bit ago. Not looking so good now. My opponent had two really good turns in a row there with Hero Precinct 1. Okay. That's good. No removal spell in response. So yeah, the 2-3 the is probably going to kill my Chandra. So we're basically relying on Butcher here. You hyped for the Dinosaur Unbanned there, Wall? Yeah, Rampaging for Rastan is going to be... It's going to be a, a nice... Uh, like, breath of fresh air here in Standard. It's a nice shake-up. A nice shake-up card uh, for the last month of the Standard format. Hey, Guru. Why would they... Oh, right. Right, right, right. Never mind. That was an easy question to answer. Say hi to my fiery friends. So we'll put them down to two. Yet another land drawn for us. There's only 22 in the deck. There's not like a ton of lands. <clears throat> well, that's. So we've seen half the lands already. I do not want Priest of Forgotten Gods. I do want Duress. And I want Chandra. And... I 
I don't mind playing Shock. <clears throat> really want to kill Hero of Precinct 1. Is Noxious Grasp just going to be better than Shock, though? For us, we don't get to go upstairs with Noxious Grasp. I think I can trim a Mayhem Devil and actually let's take out the two Foot Light Fiends and the Mayhem Devil. I don't think these cards are going to be very impactful. And let's get the Noxious Grasp and one Bedevil and trim a couple Shocks. All right, let's go here. <clears throat> yep, yeah. So yeah, if, if Remodi Reveler, you play with your... Remodies your last card, so you have no cards in hand. It just says discard a card and then draw. And even if you don't discard a card, you still do draw. So yeah, it's a it's a very good last card to play. Mulligan. Opponent is mulliganing as well. Yuck. If our mana was good, <laughs> if only our mana was good. This is like a perfect hand. Gutter Bones, Butcher, J Judith. Oh, if only our mana was good. All right, they kept their six. We'll keep our five. And we're going to keep two lands and that. I guess I didn't really need a shock in there, but I don't think it'll hurt me too bad. Guess I could have gone Swamp. <laughs> Time to attack. Our deck can, can chill out with these lands here. No more lands. We want spells. A rampaging Ferocidon is legal and standard on August 30th in paper. On Arena, it will be legal and standard on September 4th. So it's not not today. So you have to wait eight days for, for on arena. No, there's no Midnight Reaper in the deck. It's a good card, um, but just didn't didn't have room for more three drops since we're a May Mayhem Devil deck. We play Mayhem Devil and Judith, and then Chandra. Um, so don't really have room for more three mana cards. But it's a good card. Elite Guard Mage is so good. Six lands and 12 cards. Right, no more lands. Ugh. We have the land we put to the bottom too on our multi five. Yuck. <clears throat> Yuck.
There will be a point where we stop drawing lands. Hasn't happened yet. It does look like my opponent has a lot of lands, though, as well. That's all they've done the last couple of turns, so... We are in the staring contest. Bouncing Elite Guard Mage is so good. I don't know, we could we could not draw spells, I don't know why. There are no, there is no red black scry land. I just set him up so well for that Kai's Wrath now, too. Uh, case of the Mondays. The focus, keep an open mind. So 10 lands and 16 cards. And four in a row. Yay, not a land. Of course, their last card is a counter spell. Why not? Why not? Put thoughtfulness before action. I we need to move quickly. Yeah, we have we have twenty two lands in the deck. It's not. Against many <clears throat> so it's not like we just have a ton of lands in the deck. Um, I like, so yeah, I have Bantu, or sorry, yeah, I have Bantu in my main deck here. I like the Bantu because... Deals three to any target and you gain three. I like to have that with the Mayhem Devil. So like with with having Mayhem Devil also, um, I want Bantu compared to Cavalier. All right, so it's a mass accumulation. It's just gonna hang out on the gutter bones. Hey, Kurtash. Meditate and prepare. Yeah, I like I really like Treasure Map too. That'd be a nice reprint. Okay, so they have Kaya's Wrath and Time Wipe. And Time Wipe Elite Guard Mage is also a great combo. Keep up the pace. Esper so deck's hard to beat. Especially when you start with five cards and Go through ten lands. Double Oath of Kaya, huh?
Hmm. Yes, you could, Elder, too. Um, if a card gets reprinted, you can use your old ones on Arena. You don't. You wouldn't have to craft new ones. So, like, like duress is in M nineteen and M twenty. You don't have to have M twenty duress. Even like after rotation, you can use like your Ixalan duress, for example. I guess it's an Ixalan there. Um, Picking this up. I guess we just get one unblockable damage in. Hey, Leonidas skin. The problem with attacking... So we could... I could have attacked. They block with Guard Mage. And then... Um, do I want to let them double Gutter... Double Othakaya? Yeah, that's fine. Reverse. They can double Othakaya. Let's slow this. Infinite Othakayas. Here we go. See so yeah, the pro the problem with attacking there is like we attack, they block, then we have to equip to the other gut gutter bones to sacrifice and kill the guard mage, and then both of our gutter bones. We kill the, gu the guard mage, but both of our gutter bones are dead, and we don't have a way to get them back because we didn't do damage to our opponents. So I couldn't really attack. This is going to be tough to win game three against this deck. They have Golden Demise, Kaya's Wrath, Time Life, all these Othakayas. And then, of course, all the Elite Guard Mages. This is going to be tough to win game three. Devout Decree also. Oh, this is going to be tough. So we could really use our Planeswalkers to resolve, because they didn't really have Planeswalker removal besides Big Teferi that we saw that game. Just tons and tons of ways to deal with creatures. So we really want... But they... They had the veto for my one Acolyte of Flame. So really one Acolyte of Flame or Fire Artisan for sure. <laughs> yep, there's going to be a two mana to fairy in the next set. Yep. Two mana to fairy, and it'll say your opponents can only cast one spell a turn. A 
lot of hero precinct one. Zero minutes of fairy, your opponent can't play the game. Yep, rule of law. This is gonna be rule of law to fairy. Alright, good trade. I'll take it. Opponents may not untap permanence. That's that's a pretty good ult. Why are we drawing so many lands? Again, six lands and 11 cards. Over half of our cards are lands. Ugh. Thanks, Leps. I am. Let's skip to the good part. Ooh. I guess that doesn't actually do anything. for plan B. Alright, I just want to get gutter bones back. You need to take a time out. Found another hero. <sighs> Dang. Wish they didn't tuck the mayhem devil. New hand, please. Okay, we got a new hand. Hurry. Good job, Bantu. This Bantu's been pretty sweet. Yeah, I, I'll have a, a black-white sacrifice deck, Orzhov Sacrifice. Um, there, Suvi Sock. 
which is not exactly control, but that's kind of close there. Um, let's attack over here, make them double block. Okay. Then I can I can have the Mask of Immolation uh, kill the Teferi with the Mayhem Devil. So we can sacrifice do two to Teferi. So they don't get to keep drawing cards. Do you want me to face this is hardly my worst defeat. But still have them double block first. Yeah, it's it's a bigger deck though, like the the black white sacrifice deck. Hmm. Yes, please. I would like a Bantu again here in a little bit. Ooh. Anyone need a match? No. Too bad. Don't worry. I brought company. So if I play Reveler here, we just draw one card. I was kind of thinking of like saving Reveler to draw three cards. So I could just get Gutter Bones back. No, let's draw let's draw one card. Because we know we're gonna have this Bantu back here in a little bit. So we're We're not gonna really have the opportunity to draw three with it very effectively for a while. My favorite casual magic format would be cube draft. Yeah, I really, really like cube drafting. Let's hold that thought. Yeah, play more lands. Don't worry, I brought company. Enough. I have to do this so I can finish off to fairy so I don't get to draw more cards. That's how it was meant to happen. Don't get to play the Bantu. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things that yeah, shock lands are definitely safe for like crafting before rotation. Apps, I mean, shock lands are the safest thing. Um, but you know, it's just we just don't know exactly what's going to happen to the meta game after the the next set. You know, like for example, before this past set, like there was no there was no elementals. For example, that wasn't even a thing. So it's it really is hard to say. But I do think like like the Teamer Elemental Shell is like a very safe craft. Uh Esper is probably like is one of the safest crafts, like Esper Hero. I play the fire artist in there, it's basically just like ticking up and hoping to hit a land. I'll oh, just get the mayhem devil in play that speeds up and you know play my land and just speed up the clock. As we can tell here, this this game's been a lot better since I whenever I've had a planeswalker. Compared to the previous game when I did not have a planeswalker. Oh yeah, Krasis is a very safe... Yeah, if you're just looking at individual cards, Hydroid Krasis. Absolutely. Chandra, you need more control. Just let me go. Oh, they're so cute! Let's get this gutter, bo gutter bones back in hand. Let's 
This game was like Bond 2. Drew us a lot of cards. Very impressive Bond 2. RX Jelly. Thanks for the cheers there, Jelly. All right. Three and one. Yeah, Feather loses Reckless Rage. That's really about it. But that's a pretty important card to their deck. There could certainly be something printed in the next set that helps it. And then, yeah, I have... Um, I do have the playlist on the YouTube channel there with Rotation Proof decks that we're adding to today on this Monday. We've done 12 other... We've done three other Mondays so far. So we've done 12 Rotation Proof decks so far. So these are decks 13 through 16 today. And so, yeah, you can kind of see there's a lot of good stuff that's staying around. The last four sets you know, since Guilds of Ravnica on in Magic have been really powerful. For in standard. Yes, your Gruul doesn't lose much. Gruul mid range loses Rampaging Ferocidon. Is probably the biggest thing it's losing now that that'll be unbanned. We're gonna have to play some Gruul mid range with Ferocidon. And obviously, Rekindling Phoenix as well. There's those two. Darn. I wanted my... I wanted my priest. I don't know. The, the problem is they could have Adelies, and I would really need to shock Adelies if they do, but... The problem with waiting is they could also have, you know, like, Spell Pierce type effects or, you know, like, counter magic kind of thing if I wait and so we get punished there. But then if they have Adelies and I don't kill Adelies, we're punished there. So it's it's a tough situation here of which, of, like, play shock or wait. It's probably not too likely that they have the blue counter magic. Yeah, Cranko does make a lot of tokens. It would be useful in uh, match. Yeah, that, so that could be a sideboard card. Um, it would be useful in matchups that don't have much removal. So, like, if your opponents aren't playing very much removal, I could see Cranko helping out more. All right, so not playing Adelie's. So let's cast this before they draw more cards. They have Reckless Rage. Hmm. Just still punished for waiting. I wasn't really expecting Reckless Rage. So I could have dealt the damage to Arcanist and then they couldn't Reckless Rage. Okay, they're not even choosing to anyway. Um... I would like to be able to play Dreadhorde Butcher and Remati Reveler, but to play Remati Reveler, I'd have to discard a card, so that means I'd have to discard Judith, but I don't want to discard Judith. So that's a problem there. 
I guess I'm just going to go Judith then. Here. And save this for next turn. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've talked about the unban a, a few times, but um, yeah, it's it's a I think it's a a good unban. I think it's gonna it's a good shakeup for the last month of the format and um, for Osadon is a it'll be a good card to be able to have access to for just a wide variety of red decks. It's not just a mono red card, um, you know, any kind of like red creature deck. Um, and with how much vampires and escape shift. So they did still have Adelie's and Shock. This is a nightmare turn for me. is how do how would I rate Mardu Aristocrats in the current metagame and my honest answer is I, I don't know I don't know how to rate how to rate decks um, I've I've been more impressed with just rack just just two color aristocrats than three color so I like Rakdos more than Mardu Half shock, right? All right. If they have a spell, I'm in trouble. Another Adelie's. Yeah, Knight of the Ebon Legion is very powerful. They get to just re recast with Arcanist. They can recast Strike, and I'm dead. Um, yeah, Knight of the Ebon Legion is is a really good card. This deck could definitely play it, like maybe in, instead of some you know some of these other one drops. I I've been pretty happy with the Grim Initiate. I think that's my favorite of the one drops. Here, I would to be able to play Knight. I would rather play Knight over Gutter Bones or Footlight Fiend. Um, but yeah, Knight does have a really high power level. The the problem is it just you just don't really want to sacrifice Knight to Priest of Forgotten Gods, and that's that's the that's the one small problem. That's why I'm not playing it myself here. But I understand wanting to play it. Yeah, good brother. I'll, okay. Um, let me here. Let me do the sideboard in here real quick. Um, let's see. I kind of want duress in also. All right, with our cheap removal. It's hard for priests not only to stick, but then other creatures to stick. That's going to be leaving. I think we, we kind of want to turn into like a controlish type deck, honestly. Let's get Chandra and Duress in here. It's like Footlight Fiend, Mayhem Devil. It's just expensive. Mask Emulation is expensive and slow. Um. I guess I'm going to cut some gutter bones. I got to cut something real quick. Hey, numbers. Yep. We got some good rotation proof decks here. I I don't know if it's really worth deciding in duress. I, I kind of think it may be. So we're going to try it. 
Wish we had black mana, that hand looks awesome. Wish we had mana, this hand looks awesome. I don't think we're winning on five cards, to be honest. Our deck doesn't really have, like, the card advantage to make up for just going down to have five cards against seven. Like, I honestly just don't think we're winning on five. So I'm going to try this on seven. Double black with Bedevil is going to go. And basically just hope we draw land and we can play Reveler that can get us more land. Because I don't think we're winning on five. And so keeping a very risky hand here that did not work out. <clears throat> yeah, I, I I believe next week, that would be my guess for whenever the cards start coming in for the next set. Such a bad card to Legion's End. For me, but it's kind of necessary. This is looking really bad. All right, so yeah, so good brother, I'm going to I'll be I'm going to message you to, tonight after the stream about your donation deck and everything. I have a couple questions, but then also, um, yeah, maybe with Ferocidon now, maybe we will um, audible. So yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, so I'll, I'll message you after the stream. Can't be Kefnet. I can't be Kefnet, and I can't beat all the rest of these cards either. I am just fairly dead. Every deck. Ah, thanks, Arx Jelly. Getting the emo gifts out there. Every deck. Um, after rotation, every two-color two deck are going to be playing Shock Clans. Like Shock Clans are going to be everywhere in Standard and like every deck list from now till when Shock Clans rotate out in a year. So they are they are the safe, absolute safest things to craft. I say yeah, I saved the Legion's End for another turn because I was more scared of other cards like uh, Dreadhorde Arcanist there than Augurabolus. But yeah, getting through Augurabolus is going to be really tough for me. I'm not beating this Kefnet though either. This this game is just pretty over. Hello, Brazil. So three two. Three and two with our aristocrats deck. Not too bad. This wizard matchup looked pretty rough. I 
The wizard deck looked like it lined up very well against me, especially with the hands our opponent had. They just had gas the whole time, every single turn. Our opponent didn't have a bad turn that entire game. Like, the entire match. Like, game one and game two. There wasn't a single turn that was a bad turn for them. So. That happens. Um, but, yeah, that looks kind of tough. Those 1-3 creatures that we couldn't, like, shock, couldn't kill with, like, Dreadhorde Butcher everything. Um, and then a whole bunch of really cheap, efficient removal. Because they were playing Shock and Wizard's Lightning and Lightning Strike and Reckless Rage. So we couldn't get anything to stick. That was... That was a tough matchup. That one looked pretty tough for us. Um... But yeah, so that was that was Rakdos Aristocrats. We got to see it do its thing, uh, especially like that match against the Esper opponent was pretty good. Bantu um, did some really good work churning through the deck. It did seem like we had like a ton of lands in here. It's just twenty two, right? Yeah, it's just twenty two. Um, but I like the Grim Initiates. But yeah, as we talked about, Knight of the Ebon Legion is definitely an option instead of um, like Gutterbones, Footlight Fiend. Um, I do kind of think that if you go, like, Knight of the Ebon Legion, just kind of going, like, Rakdos aggro instead of, like, Sacrifice is kind of a better way to go. Like, and so instead of playing Priest of Forgotten Gods and Mayhem Devils, maybe playing, like, so basically in play, instead of playing, like, these things that Sacrifice and this thing that cares about Sacrificing, at that point, um, going towards Light at the Stage, Experimental Frenzy, you know, like, kind of like the more mono red type but uh, using black for uh, Dreadhorde Butcher and Knight of the Ebon Legion and Judith, and you can play Rotting Regisaur and that kind of stuff. Also, hey Cheerios. So yeah, Mask Immolation can, can do one damage to any, any target. So you know, you can go creatures, planeswalkers, opponents. So yeah, you can sacrifice your creature, do one damage anywhere. Um, this card was okay for us. We, we got to do some cool things with Mask of Immolation. It was pretty good for us. There. It's not something that you want to, like, have a ton of, I don't think. Because having, like, the, the two mana 1-1 one, one isn't that powerful of a card. And, like, multiple of the equipments don't really, you know, they don't stack very well. But that first one was pretty good for us there. Um... But the 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 creature is doing the damage with Mask of Immolation. The creature does the damage. So play with what's Blade Brand. Ah, give a creature Death Touch. That is an option. Or Mardu Vampires with Soren. Give your creatures death touch with Soren. Give you like crappy vampires death touch with Soren, and then sack them to Mask of Immolation. There we go. There's a deck. All right. Uh, so that's our first rotation proof deck of the day. Rakdos Aristocrats. Ooh, finished up with a three two. Even though we we did play against one opponent that that didn't do anything, so it was really like two and two here. But still a pretty good pretty good little deck um that uh will be staying in through rotation all right so if you're watching this video later on youtube don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there and of course you can check out all the other rotation proof decks with the, the playlist there um but thanks so much for watching rakdos aristocrats and i'll see you for the next video